अब मैं अगले स्पीकर को जो है इनवाइट करता हूँ कि इस मौजू पर फर्दर बात करें प्रोफेसर जवाहरल्ला अंजना मुख्तार अहमद साहब से गुजारिश कि आप जरा उनका एक ब्रीफ इंट्रोडक्शन दें जनाब जनाब एम है जवाहरल्ला साहब इस्लामिया कॉलेज के प्रोफेसर हैं और थे अभी मनीद मक्कल कच्ची के प्रेसिडेंट हैं और रामनाथ डिस्ट्रिक्ट के एम एल ए हैं इन्होंने बहुत से एक्टिविटीज़ किए हैं बहुत से बुक लिखे हैं और इन्होंने सोनामी में जो रोल अदा किया है मनमोहन सिंह के दौर में उन्हें मनमोहन सिंह सब ने बुला कर जो है उन्हें अवार्ड भी दिया गया था और बहुत से कामों में उनको काफ़ी मकबूलियत भी है उनके बुक्स भी मौजूद हैं और यू एन आई में इनको मदू भी किया था और इनको दावत देकर वहाँ पर भी बुलाया गया था मैं जनाब एम ए जवाहर अल्लाह साहब से कहूँगा कि वो अपने ख्याल का इजहार करें इन द नेम ऑफ ऑल माई टी अल्लाह द मोस्ट बेनिफिशेंट द मोस्ट मर्सीफुल वेरी डियर प्रेसिडेंट ऑफ दिस सेशन द ऑर्गेनाइजर्स of this very useful intellectual discussion and my respected co-panelist assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh may almighty peace and blessings be showered upon all of you Mr Narendra Modi came to power propagating during his campaign days that India will see development in all phases it's more than 17 months since he took over as the pm of this country rather than development what we have been witnessing during his tenure as pm is destruction of the very values of secularism harmony and integration of this country first they started with lao jihad then they proceeded to garwapsi and now it is the cow since the topic of this day is cow i would also like to confine myself on this topic when i am going to say many things in this topic i would like to at the outset say that as a muslim i am bound by the quranic verse which says la yakrah fi din there is no compulsion in religion and in another part of the quran allah taala says lakum deenukum waliya deen for them their religion and for you your religion and definitely whatever i say has to be taken in the spirit it is remarkable that in our country the cow would be presented as a mother and then used as a tool of communal propaganda and action taking at economic level cow has been an important part of the agricultural economy as very rightly pointed out to my previous eminent speaker advocate p s sridhar murthy when we were taught economics our professor used to say that our country is a bullock cart economy the world bullocks and cows being used for food by large section of society has been the norm of this country apart from adivasis large sections of dalits muslims christians and even upper caste hindus consumed beef as a cheap and rich source of protein being a large country with major cattle strain india is also the major exporter of beef 
Historically, it is interesting to note that beef was part of the food habits from Vedic times. Only in the late 19th century, mainly due to British divide and rule policy, cow got transformed into motherhood and a major tool of identity politics. The religious justification of the law supporting criminalization of cow slaughter by the Sangh Parivar community does not align with the historical as well as archaeological facts. Irony penetrates in the status symbol of the cow of then and now once researched extensively. The ancient Vedic literature suggested that the Gopata Brahman describes 21 types of yagna sacrifices, the, important or the imp most important of which included animal sacrifice. The offering varied depending on which god was being propitiated. Gods such as Indra had a special preference for bull's meat, while sacrifices to Agni was of both bulls and cows. Vedic tradition suggests that the Maruts and the Aswins were also offered cows. The Aswamedha and the Rajasuya, Rajasuya Yagnas all included animal sacrifice in large numbers. In Ashwamedha Yagna, for instance, more than 600 animals were killed and its end was celebrated with the sacrifice of, with the sacrifice of, I am emphasizing, 21 cows. The archaeological excavations reflect ample uh, evidence, am empirical evidence for these same excavations at Lal Kila district Buland Sahar was conducted by the archaeological research laboratory at Oxford indicate a mean date of 1880 BC found animal bones in large numbers. The cut marks present on many of them suggest that the meat was the stable diet Evidence of some grain cereal suggested agriculture as a subsidiary occupation was also available. When we quote <coughs> Professor D. N. Jab, they may say that he is a leftist. If I quote Ram Punyani, they may say that he is again a leftist. Or if I quote our own V. T. Rajshekar, they may say that he is an anti Brahmin beta but I am not going to quote them. Instead of that, I am go going to quote two heroes who have been held in high esteem by the Sangh Parivar. One, was, one is Swami Vivekananda. Swami Vivekananda points out, and uh, this is from his uh, talk, delivered at the Shakespeare Club, Pasadena, California, way back in 2nd February 1900, on the theme of Buddhistic India. He says, Swami Vivekananda says, you will be astonished if I tell you that according to old ceremonials, he is not a good Hindu who does not eat beef. On certain occasions, he must sacrifice a bull and eat it. <laughs> not only this, uh, this is not an isolated uh, quote of uh, uh, Swami Vivekananda ji, but this is also corroborated by other research work sponsored by Ramakrishna Mission established by Swami Vivekananda himself. One of uh, the writings from uh, Ramakrishna Mission says, the Vedic Aryans, including the Brahmins, ate fish, meat, and even beef. A distinguished guest was honored with beef served at meal. This is uh, from C. Kunharajan's Vedic culture, cited in the series by Suniti Kumar Chatterjee and others. The other person whom I want to quote is a hero who is venerated by the Rashtriya Swayam Sevak every day in his early uh, morning shakas. He is along with uh, Dr. Hegdevar and Govalkar, M.S. Golvalkar, uh, the other hero who is remembered by the uh, Swayam Sevaks early in the morning is V.D. Savakar. V.D. Savakar, the pioneer of the concept of Hindutva, seems more blunt where he emphasizes that cow is neither God nor mother, but purely a useful animal. Savakar also says, we should not worship it, but we must breed and nourish the animal because we can reap the best advantages from it. He has written a book in Marathi which is called Ex Kirane, where he also lambas cow worship by saying that if someone from the animal kingdom 
is worth worshipping then why not start worshipping pig also as among the nine avatars of vishnu there is one in which is vara avatar vara stands for pig also he also mentions that are that there that there are references even in vedas when cows were slaughtered gomati vedayak turapkana uleke this is from his book uh, again i want to quote from um, savaka where he says that animals such as cow and buffalo and trees such as banyan and people are useful to man hence we are fond of them to that extent we might even consider them worthy of worship does it not follow then that when under certain circumstances that animal or tree become a source of trouble to mankind it ceases to be worth of sustenance or protection and as such its destruction is in humanitarian or national interest and become a human or national dharma my dear brothers and sisters it's a open secret that the saffrons while eulogizing vivekananda and savarkar prefer to keep mum about many such aspects of their exploitive uh, observations dear brothers from the recent murder of uh, muslims of dadri of uh, uh, muhammad akhlaq who incidentally was the father of a young man serving in the indian air force uh, coincidentally he is serving in iaf tambaram uh, sartaj uh, for allegedly slaughtering a cow and uh, uh, keeping the uh, flesh of course it has been tested now that the flesh found in the fridge is not not uh, that of beef uh, these incidents whether the lynching of akhlaq or the killing of uh, dalits for uh, carrying beef etc etc uh, has been reflected even in a data uh, released by the union home ministry itself the union home ministry says that there have been 287 communal incidents alone in 2015 that is till may 31st 2015 most of the victims were either muslims and or christians the response of the bjp towards the violence against muslims has been highly uh, disappointing particularly uh, that of the dadri incident now this sang parivar regime whether it is in delhi or in uh, i mean whether it is in the center or in various uh, other states they have considered cow worthier than women of course uh, earlier speaker was uh, pointing out how the maharashtra bill on cow slaughter was put in cold storage for almost 20 years and now pranab mukhar kumar mukaji has given his cons- uh, consent to that bill and here what i want to uh, what i want to emphasize that mere possession of beef or beef products will be punishable by a fine of rupees 10000 or 5 years in prison that is in maharashtra but at the same time a perpetrator of sexual harassment would get a maximum sentence of 2 years whereas if the police spot you holding a piece of beef in your hand then you can be put in jail for 5 years what sort of country we are uh, living as uh, my, the earlier speakers pointed out india under narendra modi has become the highest exporter of beef during the upa regime mr narendra modi addressing various campaigns at different parts of the country he says in it saddens me that the present upa government led by congress is promoting slaughtering of cows and exporting beef to bring ping revolution but what has happened the government under him has sold meat worth 3.3 billion dollars during april november 2015 14 compared to 2.8 billion in the same period in the previous year 
Like that I can go on uh, quoting uh, statistics. Uh, it is a hypocritic government, not only the government, the people leading the government, the members of the government, the pa MPs of this BJP government, they are all hypocritic to the core. And one person I wanted to point out here, his name is Sangeet Singh So. He is the BJP M MLA uh, from, uh, who has been responsible for the Muzaffar Nagar riots. The Hindu, the English daily has very clearly exposed with very valid proof that this Sangeet Singh Som, who was responsible for the Dadri murder of Muhammad Agala, is a major shareholder of Al Dua Food Processing Private Limited, which is the largest meat exporter of this country. <laughs> Finally, what is the solution? Where lies the solution? The Indian Constitution guarantees every citizen the right to practice his or her religion without any interference of the state that is man mandated to maintain its uh, secular character. By extension, this gives citizens the right to dress the way they like, eat what they like, and to observe rituals that are integral part of his or her religion. But the BJP, the Sang Parivar, wants to distract this very idea of India. When I say very idea of India, I would like to very categorically state that secular India, the secularism in India is different from the Western concept of secularism. The Western concept of secularism is negation of religion, whereas the Indian concept of secularism is to give equal respect to all religion. And mind you, this concept of secularism is not the one which has come in the post-1947 period. India, right from Chandragupta Maurya's period, Ashoka's period, has been a secular country. Chandragupta Maurya ruled a very big Hindu empire. Finally, he died as a Jain. What does it mean? Even during his so-called Hindu Raj, there was room for some other religion. Ashoka, he embraced Buddhism. What does it show? It shows that there was accommodation for some other religion other than Hinduism. Shivaji, the warrior who has been praised by Sang Parivar, had his own secretary who was a Muslim. His bodyguards, they were Muslims. And 50 of his generals were Muslims. On the other side, Aurangzeb fought, fought Shivaji, had Hindu Rajput commanders and princes helping him during his war against Shivaji. So, the concept of secularism is an age-old Indian tradition and the Sangh Parivar wanted to distract it. And finally, I want to quote the words of Mahatma Gandhi, uh, which is very much uh, relevant here. Mahatma Gandhi says, beef is not their Muslims added ordinary food. Their ordinary food is the same as that of the millions. What is true is that there are very few Muslims who are vegetarians from religious motive. Therefore, they will take meat, including beef, but, they, but when they get it. But during the greater part of the years, millions of Muslims owing to poverty go without any kind of meat. Finally, he says, I regard with same veneration, I regard... Um, the cow as my mother, but this is the last words of Mahatma Gandhi. Fullest recognition of freedom to the Muslims to slaughter cows is indispensable of communal harmony and is the only way of saving cow. <laughs> Mind you, this is not my words, this is the words of the father of the nation. So let us continue this intellectual uh, discussions and see to it the real secular India reemerges in India and the forces which are uh, which are against this concept of secularism, communal harmony are shown the door soon. Thank you. Shukriya Dr. Joharullah sahab. Continuing further, as we know and again in the words of the Quran, worship not the sun and the moon, but worship the one who created the sun and the moon. So similarly, 
and we find that in spite of whatever differences we may have, there is still yet a common platform that people of such diverse thoughts and religion they can still come together on a platform if it concerns truth. Right? And I believe, as rightly said by Professor Jawaharullah, this is a very healthy discussion going on here. Lots of good thoughts being expressed out here.